Let's play some baritone ukulele today. We're going to be playing Scarborough Fair. This is, uh, you pick up the sheet music over at jollyrogerukulele.com on the front page, or if, it, if you're seeing this video years after it's been produced, uh, who knows where those sheet music is. Uh, <clears throat> every day we're here to play baritone ukulele. We're gonna turn it in, we're gonna make it a thing. There's no reason not to. Let me update this and see. I'm posting our link on it for today's lesson on the website. Other things that I do over there on Jolly Roger Ukulele is we teach a little, uh, we teach a little bit of beginning, beginning in, in uh, ukulele, a little bit of beginning uh, baritone, a little advanced ukulele. I don't know what advanced means, but it's hard. And we do uh, some harmonica and some guitar. So we're just have all kinds of lovely things going over there. You should get involved. Um, today, a brand new arrangement. Not really, uh, the arrangement's old, but the uh, brand new piece of sheet music for baritone. And um, I just posted it this morning. Some For some reason, the power went off on my thing of a bopper. So I got to wait 20 minutes for that to speed up. Meanwhile, let's look at my texts. Uh, <laughs> all right funny funnies there's always funnies on my texts people send me their serious stuff on in my email box <laughs> uh well, see, I, I don't know if you guys have ever go to the front page of Yahoo, but on the front page of Yahoo, at the top, there's what news you need to know. And honestly, it's pretty good. Like, you usually do need to know that stuff. And uh, uh, it's always rather entertaining what is going on in our country these days. Not it's scary entertaining, uh, but uh, uh, I guess I'm hoping for the best. All right, we're not here to talk politics. We're not here to talk about what's going on in the news. We are here to play baritone ukulele. I'm logging into my email. I have a thing I have to do right after I'm done with guitar class today. And so I'm trying to figure out... Uh, figure out what I'm supposed to do. Yeah, it's crazy. All right, let's see. Who wandered in here? Michalina, howdy. Jack, future baritone aficionados. You guys are gonna you guys are gonna lead the world with baritone. You're gonna be number one. People are gonna come to you. There's nobody out there doing it better than you are. Cindy's in, Linda's in, Vic is in. Wait just a couple more minutes. We've usually been getting a dozen or so. What time is it? Two o four. Yeah, I got. I've been running late all day today. Ever since the harmonica debacle this morning, uh, we've been. Uh, I've been afraid of my own technology. So we're here. Um, hopefully, you had a chance to print out this the music. Um, I didn't fix our song from yesterday, but I'll try to get that uh, reposted tonight so that we have it ready for the concert tomorrow. Um, yesterday, we had a. I found some typos on yesterday's music, and so I do want you to have. Uh, clean copies of that for tomorrow. So I'll, I'll try like heck to get it reposted tonight uh, with those few typos fixed. Uh, let's see if we can find some typos in today's music, huh? Scarborough Fair Baritone. So guys, we've talked about this before and, I, and you probably have figured it out. I am teaching you the exact same thing I teach ukulele players. The challenge with that is, is that you're in a different key. And so while your music is every bit as playable as theirs, it's designed to be where you can be successful with it. Um, you can't play with ukulele players because you're in the wrong key or they're in the wrong key. You're in the right key. Um, so I will be over time posting ensemble baritone sheet music. 
so that if you have a ukulele friend and you want to play with them, they get the ukulele one, you get the ensemble baritone piece, and then you can play together. The other way that you can play with ukulele players is to play this piece of sheet music, but you have to have a capo when you put it up here on five. Now, I am adamantly 100%, a thousand percent, a million percent opposed to you using a capo. But if there was an emergency <laughs> where you had to play with ukulele players, uh, you could take in your sheet music, put a capo on there, and then it will be the same key as them. Um, and of course, that would only apply to music you're, you've bought, gotten from me anyway. So um, so just know you're, you're, uh, there's a ukulele on your baritone ukulele if you capo at five. But, but honestly, I'm just, I don't think re using and relying on capos is a good idea for you. Um, it will be much better for us to just teach you how to play and to give you sheet music that changes depending on your situation. So uh, let's see. Um, who, who did I miss? Diane made it in. Ray, uh, download Scarborough Fair. What is this? Again? You couldn't download the Scarborough Fair. Wouldn't download for you. Let me go check. It's kicking open for me. Um, Shucks, I don't know why I wouldn't download for you, boss. Um, yeah, Ray, go go try again. It is working. Um, not sure why it's not opening for you. It's opening fine for me. So maybe just a temporary glitch. I don't know. Uh, what's the significance of liking on a YouTube site? So YouTube has this, you know, that your big thing in YouTube is you want to get where they will give you a little bit of a payment, right? And um, you have to have so many watch hours and so many subscribers. And then, so so that gets you into the, hey, we, we'll give you a little bit money to keep producing content. Um, and I think, according to what I read, it is a little bit of money. <laughs> um, but people want to get there. And so once you get to, the, they call it monetization. Once you get to the monetization level, then that's the kind of you, you videos that you see making it onto the front page of YouTube. And once you're on the front page of YouTube, then your subscribers go way up and people, you know, you end up in this sort of mainstream of you, YouTubery. Um, one of the ways to get pushed in toward the front page once you've been monetized is to have people like your video. So in other words, if you have a thousand subscribers and two of them you like your video, it's way less likely for them to push that um, in any meaningful way versus if, if 50 people like it or a hundred people like it. And so, so likes are important. I don't quite understand the matrix, but I do know once you're at monetization level, you want to have people liking your videos so that um, they're more likely to push you. You know, like when you watch a video and then after that, a bunch pops up, would you like to watch these ones? And there's all these choices. Um, you're more likely to get into that list if you are well liked and you have a lot of people and all of that stuff. Um, with my site, I don't have that many people coming to it, but you guys that do come to it watch a lot of time. So you're, you'll, you're often here for 40 minutes or something. So I have no problem covering the time watched issue. It's getting enough people that are interested in what we're doing. Uh, so far, I have not been super successful with that, but I have not also not spent the money necessary to advertise to get people here. Um, and so there's, you know, I'm weighing whether I even want to do that, <laughs> to be honest. Um, but so the like, this, the short answer to your question, Cindy, is we like videos um, and that helps the person's channel be more likely to get to a greater audience. That's what the liking does. The more people, like I have to get a thousand subscribers before I can even monetize. Once I get there, then I, I've got no problem with the watch hour part of that component but like a lot of people will get subscribers but people don't hang around on their channel and so they don't get monetized either you know if you're if you're super cute and funny um but you only put on little little short videos uh people don't watch long enough for you to become something so you'll notice um the people like in ukulele that are popular are always pretty uh they you almost always do some fairly lengthy videos they do regular and ongoing videos so that you keep coming back to their channel uh, and keep watching and so that's that's how you get to be famous uh, you, you gotta you gotta look better than this probably <laughs> um, and be 20 and all of that stuff so 
yeah uh, excellent ensemble baritone. Yeah, so that way, um, so so you'll have both sets of papers. The solo baritone stuff. That's what you guys are working on here. Um, and then once you get your skill set in place, then you will say, "Oh, I'm going to play with a bunch of ukulele players. I'm going to grab the ensemble sheet." Um, and it's also for teachers. Sometimes I'll get a class, and they will have uh, somebody will be in a baritone, and I'm like, "Oh, brother, I got to give them a ukulele while they're in class." Uh, um, and this way, they could just play with us right off the bat. Okay, Terry, Michalina, took a minute to load for me, but it worked. Okay, got it. Okay. Um, is it possible to remove a prior comment um, on this chat? I think you can. You just did, it looks like. <laughs> um, Arlo's in. Cozy's in. Okay. That's everybody. We got enough people. Uh, so anyway, that's the story. That's what I know about YouTube. Um it would sure be nice to be famous, but uh, but I, it's probably not going to happen. So I don't worry about it too much. Scarborough Fair. Okay. Um, guys, this is an amazing piece of music for baritone. I love it. I love it in any event, but it is really, really lovely. And it's unfortunately, it's a tiny bit hard to play. So those of you guys that are... Um, been around a while, baritone's a thing, ukulele's a thing, you've got music in your background, all this stuff is making sense to you. This is not going to be a terribly difficult song. Those of you who are newer, who either don't have music in your background, or maybe this is your first instrument that you've really tackled, uh, this is kind of a hard piece to play. And so what you're really assessing as you were working on this is, hey, do I know what I'm supposed to do? Can I figure that out? If I know what I'm supposed to do, you're about where I want you to be. Whether you can do it or not is a whole other issue. And so we're going to walk through it in all three ways that we would typically play. And then we'll talk a little bit about your future in baritone and my plans for you guys as baritone players going into the fall. Um, today's the first day of October. Okay. So it's, it's officially, it's legitimately it's time to get dialed in for the end, for, for winter to come. Uh, uh, unless, of course, you're living in the Southern Hemisphere and then spring's on the way. Your main chords, D minor. This is a chord you want to have in your quiver. This is going to come up a lot as a baritone player. It's beautiful. Listen to that. Okay. Are you going to? And then go to your C chord. Scarborough. And then come right back. Notice that that motion there, the D, D minor motion and the C chord are the exact same shape. You just got to change the string. So don't get all wild between them. Are you going to Scarborough Fair? Okay, that's it. Okay, now you've got your F chord here, and we've already had a talk with you guys that you are bar chord heavy. Everything you do is going to be involving bar chords in one way or another with this instrument, and we don't complain. <laughs> it is not going to be go well for you in the beginning it is eventually going to be awesome okay so you're going to take your bar chord on one e shape in front and that's your f chord okay that's going to come up a lot it's part of what your makes you special the nice part is your bar chords will get cleaned up and and, and in good shape sooner than ukulele players ukulele players really legitimately can avoid playing b flat there's no hope you're going to avoid playing f so um, just just get comfy with it and if yours sounds like this that's okay right now it'll go away it really will it just may not be tomorrow okay okay so um get your f chord on parsley that's it that's it strum parsley and then you go back to your D minor, sage, rose, sing G chord, Mary and G D minor, time. Remember, there's another F chord, me to one who lives there. Now, something happened between measures 12 and 13. You'll see as you're leaving 12, it says 4-4. Four, four. It's to tell you, uh-oh, the meter's changing. You get to 13, it's officially now 4-4. Four, four there that that one measure has four beats in it and then we go back to three four um go back to your d minor she once was a true love of mine okay so know that measure 13 has four beats in it everything else has three beats in it and that's an homage to uh, simon and garfunkel they made that 
measure longer than the others. Um, it sounds best that way. Um, the original piece of music would not have been written that way. There would have been three beats in there as well. But uh, Simon and Garfunkel messed it up in a good way, and so we do what they we we do what Paul Simon says to do. Next, um, I don't think there is an X. Let's play it. Okay, you have to listen to me sing. I know it's brutal. One, two, three. Are you going to Scarborough Fair? Parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme. One, two. Remember me to one who lives there. Three, four. She once was a true love of mine. Two, three. Back to the top. Tell her to make me a cambric shirt. Two, three. No, I missed the F chord, sorry. No. Parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme. Remember me to one who lives there. Three, four, she once was a true love. Second ending. Definitely not in a range that I can sing it at all, <laughs> um, but you got the idea. The chords there, that F chord does sneak up on you um, in both times that it shows up. So just be aware that it's going to happen. And um, uh, there's a piece of music you could practice on for quite a while. It's always going to be a great song, so there's no reason to... Um, not get good at it um i will tell you i was putting in the, the lyrics and the lyrics get dumber and dumber in it so the first line is really really good after that they go down in quality quite a lot and you can almost be certain that um, a song of this age people kept messing with it and messing with it and trying to adjust the lyrics and so on and what i what is our what we has been passed down to us is the official lyrics i feel very confident are not the official lyrics um but uh we know it from simon garfunkel that first man first line and so stick with that one that's pretty good the others are not so good let's play the melody and those of you guys that are newer, this is your this is your wheelhouse. Being able to play melody on even the toughest songs, that's what's something that I think is very exciting. Once you've been through this whole program, hopefully you can just play melody. And yeah, you're not going to hit them perfect every time, but that's what I want you to be able to do. There's nothing more important than that. Um, and if we can get the, well, the rhythm is probably more important than that, but it's pretty high up on the list of things that I want you to be able to just knock out and not lose your mind over. Um, the first part of this song is in first position all the way down um, through um, measure four. You can play in first position. At measure five, you're going to need to move up to fifth position because you're going to be playing this 10, and that's a long way away, right? So you're going to have to um, stretch your hand a little bit to get to your tens. All right, from the top, start in first position. One, two, three. Three, three, five, 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 oh, one, oh, three, two, three, rest. Move up to fifth position. Five, eight, ten. Eight, five, seven, three, five, two, three, one, two. Ten, 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 eight, five, five, three, one, oh, one. You feel to go into first position again. Three, five, three, one, oh, three, one. One, start again. Three, three, five, 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 oh, one, oh, three, two, three, rest. Five, eight, ten, ten, sorry, I blew it. Eight, 
Do you know if this is the same key that Simon Carfunkel did it again? I don't know that. I don't know that. I doubt it. I doubt it. It's very rare when um, when we're working on instrumental work exclusively, you have a choice. And this is what you see on YouTube all the time. You can either play it in a, the position that works best on the instrument, or you can play it in the original key of whatever the band wanted it to be played in and most of the time i could care less what the band played it in because i don't have a band and i'm not that band in particular and so i'm looking for the way that it fits onto this instrument the best and so you, in your head it may sound like if you if you are in love with this and you've heard it from simon garfunkel 500 times and then you come to this and you're like it doesn't sound quite right um i run into that with beatles tunes all the time that i adjust the, whatever key it's in to make it playable on a ukulele and people come and they say there's something not right about that well it's because the key has been changed and they don't that they were so used to hearing it in one manner that it's hard to hear it in a new manner. What I do know is if you play through this a few times, you will not have a problem with it afterwards. But initially, you're like, something seems off. So I don't know what the original key that Simon and Garfunkel did it in. Um, I do know it fits under the ukulele quite lovely in this key. Um, so there's that. When On YouTube, you'll see guys using capos to get it to the exact same key as the original band. And... Um, Again, that's really meant for singers uh, to capo up and then do it exactly the way the band did it. Hotel California is a perfect example of that. On that one, you'd need four guitar players and they end with capos on seven. Um, and I recently wrote it out for our group and um, I don't let them use capos. And so it was, it was actually quite a bit harder because I wanted to keep it in that original key because our ear is so set for that. And it was just, it was a, a lot more work than it needed to be because I don't want to use capos. Um, it sounds beautiful. It was just hard to sing along with it. And I was wondering if that was why. Probably, probably. You're, you, you, I can't sing in this, this one in this key. Um, on uh, ukulele, it's in G minor and I can sing it a little better. Um, and so as we talk about, when as those of you guys that are singers you probably will use a capo you play this exact thing but you you capo it to uh until it, it find your voice finds its place um and so if you are a singer you may end up using capos uh or you could just learn to play the instrument and do both and uh, then this becomes your capo so um but yeah michelin i could imagine that sometimes uh when you approach a piece and it's not fitting, you know, you're used to singing it to the radio or whatever. And then all of a sudden it's not fitting your voice, probably because the key got changed. All right, let's put it all together. Start with your D, D minor chord. Uh, let's walk through everything and then we'll play it. Okay, so uh, nice straight down, zero, two, three. Hit the three again. This is a tough stretch for baritone players, guys. You gotta get your pinky up on five while holding the chord. Hit the five again. And you get that nice transition to C chord. Just move it up and lose your pinky. Roll your pinky down to get the one and then put it back. And then D minor. A couple of decorative notes here. Two, three. 
going to grab your F chord. You can grab a partial bar in the F or a full bar in the F, whichever, you, whichever you're working on. Okay, strum that. Isn't that pretty? That's a really cool chord. And then you're going to go grab five, eight. When you grab this 10, just use a partial bar. You grab all three tens at once. You can leave this note open. It's going to be sound fine because you're going to end up with a low D and then a high D minor. Um, it's going to sound cool. Strum that. Grab your eight. Strum your five. Strum your seven. Strum your three. Go back into your G mi D minor. Pinky up on five. Hit the two and the three. Use your pinky and play a regular D minor. Go abandon that, go all the way up and grab your full 10 again. Hit the 10 again. Hardest point in the song here. Um, and I gave you a little chord chart right below it so you know what's going on. You're going to put a bar on five. You're going to put the. Uh, C shape in front of it, bar on five, C shape in front of it. And then with this one, you got to also get the eight. So your pinky's got to be on eight. So this is actually what you're going to be holding. Bar on five, middle on six, ring on seven, pinky on eight. That's a tough moment. Okay. And when you're playing this song, your whole thought is, I got to make that moment right. And everything else is pretty easy. Not pretty easy. Everything else is hard, but this is really hard. Okay. Play that. Then lose your pinky, hit the five, and then strum it. Then go ahead and grab your three, one, and then measure 13, C chord. Strum one, then measure 14, put your D minor back on. Pinky on five. F chord with your pinky on three. Hit the one. Another C chord. Did I just say F chord? I meant C chord. Hit the three. And then D minor. Two, three, a full D minor. And then we'll go back and play it a second time. Second time you come through, don't play 17 and 18. You see the bar above there for your first and second repeat. We'll go to the third repeat, which is the ending. And let's play, um, let's go ahead and play 19 is a 0, 2, 3. Full D minor at 20. And then jump up to the 10, bar, partial bar on 10, and strum. And that's a cool ending. <laughs> All right, so we're going to play through it three times, and then that's going to be, and then we'll have a little talk about your future. Okay, so here we go. One, two, three. shape in front, pinky on eight.
go do it one more time. At the top. about that that's a good song right that works um yeah i am uh spent a little bit of time on it this morning we're just working on lyrics and stuff and um i would say line number one is solid everything after that is very dubious as to whether it's real or not um but yeah this is a nice this is never going to be a bad song so i think you could probably just put it in your morning warm-up routine and just be working on it uh turning it into something it, you'll eventually have it memorized it's not that long of a song and it really really sounds nice especially with your the longer and more connected tones that you can build out of playing the baritone you know you've got those nice big metal strings it'll vibrate for a while and so let those kind of pull you through and let you let those um um, as much as possible let those ring as long as you can before making your next move and um, because it's in the key of uh, d d minor in this case you got a lot of times where your top string is open and just ringing along just helping you through those sections and it's really quite lovely i think um, you know basically if you look at uh, this measure six through ten you can keep that d ring that d string just ring along happy as a clam all the way through there and it, it kind of helps it's like putting caulk and paint on something you know you everything looks sort of a mess until uh when you're doing construction and everything doesn't quite look quite right and then you come in and the guy runs a bunch of caulk over everything and then we paint it up and then everything looks like perfect you know and you're like oh <laughs> that's that's what that's what having those nice long chords or nice long notes covering up some of your uh, will do for you and you can end up with something really beautiful there okay that's what I know about baritone ukulele here's what you need to know about baritone ukulele tomorrow is your final exam <laughs> that's not the right way to think about it tomorrow we have our end of the week concert uh we will be playing and make a better bar make a better bar worksheet again as always on friday uh then we're going to play daisy bell we're going to play the key of c arpeggiator uh we're going to play am i looking at the right thing yeah we're, uh, key of c arpeggiator then we're going to play the aloha oi from yesterday and scarborough fair from today uh, everything we're playing tomorrow is on the upper end of difficulty for uh the class so it's definitely push pieces and you'll decide how you feel about that so tomorrow your goal probably is hey i maybe can't play everything but what i am going to play is going to be played at my highest ability so if you're on chords and you're and you think yep i'm going to bring chords in that's perfectly fine uh make make them the best you can if you're playing melody uh you want every note to just be beautiful and clean and clear and crisp and beautiful um and then of course my goal for everybody in these classes is to get you where you're playing chord melody at the same time and so be thinking about you know as you're practicing and warming up uh practicing tonight warming up tomorrow um which songs are going to go well where's your trouble spots and see uh spend a little bit of time on those trouble spots get everything as nice and neat and tidy as you can tomorrow then uh you will know you'll know hey man things are going well for me i'm ready to continue moving forward or you'll also know gosh man i'm struggling like heck and that's normal that's not something you should be embarrassed about that's definitely something that some people fight uh what we're asking you to do here is to play what we're really doing here is playing a 17th century lute, and it is not easy. And we are playing it in that fashion, exactly how they would have played a lute back in the day. 
and uh, it's it takes a lot of work. It's not not something that just comes to everybody. And so um, you'll you'll do a little self assessment tomorrow. Then on next week, tell your friends, get them a baritone, sit them down, and say, "Listen, you need to play this because I need a baritone friend." Um, uh, you will sit down and go through. Um, we'll start. We'll start on Frere Jaca again. So October 5th, we're starting the whole program over again. It will happen every day, just like that. We just did this program. This worked out pretty well, I thought. Thought, yeah, yeah. We got we got a dozen players who are better baritone players now. Then, um, in addition to that, each day we will have the the beginning piece. You know, the the intro piece. I'm also going to give you one piece out of book two every day. So we'll have two pieces every day. One will be the easier piece, and one will be the harder piece. And um, we're going to go through all of book two. Now, there's probably 50 songs or something in book two. There's a mess of them. And, uh, of course, part of my goal with doing that is to convert the ukulele pieces into baritone pieces. So we also have a book two for you guys. So uh, we'll find typos and all that stuff. It's a little bit self-serving in the sense that um, I know those all, all of those pieces are really nice. Um, and it would be nice to have them convert it all into baritone as well. So by the time you uh, we finish that process, um, you will be playing everything that we have already played with the ukulele players. So um, the Americana stuff, fr the French stuff, the Irish stuff, the Italian stuff, the Mexican stuff, Tin Pan Alley, celebrations, classic, classical, um, a little bit of classical music, cowboy music, Stephen Foster music, all that stuff. Um, you guys will have your copies of that as well. So that way you will have a complete ukulele education under your belt and so for some of you you guys are probably already fine players you, you and so with that stuff you are now moving on to the idea of what am i going to make as something as impress impress others pieces right and so you want to have a couple of pieces of music that you can play that people are like oh gosh you're really good <laughs> and so you'll be searching for those over the next uh month well into the into the fall um we will also starting in november we switch to christmas music and so some of you are for that and some of you are against that um we're gonna do it whether you're for or against it or not so we will have that um a moment where we'll switch over to do, be doing getting a little Christmas music heavy uh, and getting some of that started up. Um, by the way, this instrument really, again, works really well with that stuff. Will but there be a third six-week program for Ensemble Baritone? I Probably not, Cindy. The, the, the Ensemble Baritone stuff will be sort of on an as-needed basis. So let's say that you get together with your your buds and they're like hey let's play scarborough fair and you go grab and they of course pull my sheet music up because it's the best and they will say oh oh you need to be in a different key and you'll say ah oh, god i gotta have the ensemble piece and you'll go grab that but i don't but by the time you get where you know even what the heck an ensemble piece is uh you won't really need instruction on it you'll just read through it and you'll know what's going on so i doubt we'll do a six-week program just for the ensemble stuff um but we can talk about it over time and see if if you guys think it's necessary um basically what you're doing is playing baritone stuff in a less cool key for your instrument <laughs> is how that will work out so you'll end up doing a whole lot more um, in ukulele friendly keys, which is a very good in, in, uh, education in and of itself. So it's definitely something that I want you to be able to do as well. Um, but whether we would actually dedicate class time for that or is, I, I think is still a little bit up in the air. Cozy says, well, Cozy is down <laughs> with Christmas music. Um, it's a changing keys issue. Yeah, and, and what will happen, guys, is as baritone players, you will understand switching keys way sooner than ukulele players do because you're going to be doing it. And, um, I, and it, there is a definite formula, and it works out every time, and it's very mathematical. And I do have the ability to teach that to you, um, but probably not as maybe or maybe not as a classroom setting i don't know we'll figure that out we'll think about that um because it's it's a, applies to your instrument much more than it does to ukulele and so you will get you will get good at it don't worry don't worry you're going to be fine <laughs>
<laughs> um, all right, guys. So I'll see you tomorrow. Have a wonderful evening. Um, take time to pull all of these pieces out. They are tough, and so and don't come in. You know, come in. Don't uh, don't uh, come in ready to play at your highest level and that whatever that is. And I wouldn't worry about whether it's not the highest level, but do what you can. And then um, some of you will be fine. You'll be able to play everything. It's no big deal. Others of you still getting your, get your system geared up. And I want you to be able to feel good about whatever level you're playing at um, because we're just going to keep going, right? We're going to start, we're going to keep, keep moving forward. Uh, and for some of you, that means, Hey, I'm going to take introduction a second time and really study on that stuff. And you'll be amazed how much easier it is the second time around. So, all right. Good to see all of you guys. Terry, thanks for being here. Vic, Cindy. Um, yeah, it is fun, right? Right. We're the only ones, I think, on the planet taking baritone ukulele uh, at this level. So let's 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 turn it into something. Um, Michalina, good to see you. I hope the smoke is starting to clear out up there. I don't know. It didn't look very good on the news. Uh, Ray, good to see you, bud. Cozy, have a great day. Peace. <laughs> All right, guys. I'm gonna pull the plug. You have a wonderful day. I'll see you see you tomorrow.